Hi, I'm Travis Bullock. I'm glad you booked your hunt with Mile High Outfitters. We've put together this informational video to help you better prepare for your hunt. I'm going to go over a few of the things that I think you should bring, a few of the things that I think you should leave behind that you, you always want to bring with you and, and you really don't need, and just a few of the things you should be prepared for on your trip. First of all, we'll go over your clothing. Um, when you're, when you're hunting with us, you're going to be hunting in the very rugged wilderness most of the time. It's going to be probably tougher than anything you've ever experienced before. You're going to be riding horseback and you're going to be doing a lot of walking. So you want to be dressed accordingly. Uh, first of all is your footwear. What I like to wear is I like a good leather boot, something that's well broke in. In the early season I like a good Vibram sole and later in the season I like an air bob traction. If you notice those little round air bobs those are really good for walking in the snow because the snow goes in and it pops right back out so it's got really good traction in the snow. I wind up wearing these rubber boots a lot late in the season. You notice these have air bob traction also. Um, good thing about these rubber boots is they let you they are completely waterproof. The, the bad thing about them is they sweat a lot so the, the other good thing about them is they're pretty cheap I, and I go through boots fairly uh, quickly so I, I like wearing these quite a bit late in the season. The other type of footwear that you'll want is you'll want some kind of a camp shoe. These are what I wear. These are little slip-on slippers. You can get up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom if you need to. Um, they're cheap. They're, they're actually well made. This is about the third or fourth year I've used these slippers. And I actually wrangle horses with these same slippers. So uh, they are well made. They're insulated. They're comfortable. And uh, you can buy them in Cabela's. Fairly reasonable. For socks, when you plan on coming on your hunt, plan on bringing one pair of socks per day. I wear wool socks exclusively. Sometimes they'll have a blend of polypropylene or something else in them, but mostly I just wear wool socks. Wool is probably the best all-around clothing that you can wear, the uh, material that you can wear. It wicks water away from your body and it stays warm even when it's wet. So I wear, I wear a wool shirt, I wear wool pants a lot of times late in the season, and I'll wear as much wool as I can possibly get usually. In fact, as far as hats go, this is the wool hat that I wear late in the season a lot. It's comfortable. It's almost too warm sometimes. It does have a set of ear flaps that will pop down that you can cover your ears with. The other thing that I wear for hats is I'll wear, I wear this, this system a lot. It looks kind of funky, but it works. You wear a baseball cap, keeps the sun out of your eyes, and then when it gets cold you put a, a stocking cap over the top of it. Like I say, it looks a little weird. It's not exactly what you picture your western outfit are looking like, but it, it does the job and it does it really simple. It does it lightweight and it keeps you warm. Um, as far as shirts go, or as far as yeah, as far as shirts go, I usually wear just a cotton t-shirt underneath, or polypropylene, something like that to wick the moisture away from your body. I'll wear a wool shirt on top of that. Usually it's got pockets in it, um, and it's colorful. If you want to wind up wind up in the brochure, wear some color. Blue or red works really well. Uh, but anyway, it's a good wool shirt, and like I say, it wicks the moisture away from your body. Works very well. And then over the top of that, I'll wear some kind of a jacket. Now, jackets with hoods work really nice. If uh, the neat thing about the stocking cap and the baseball cap is the hood will slide right over the top of that, and it works really handy that way. Or I'll wear some kind of a polar fleece jacket, something lightweight. And then over the top of that, I'll wear my rain gear. I like this Cool Dry. It's very lightweight. Uh, it's a little bit noisy, but for 99% of our hunting, it isn't going to matter anyway. If you're bow hunting, it might make a difference on how much noise you create. But most of our shots, if the elk can hear this, you better be pulling the trigger because they're close enough. Um, and as far as uh, pants go, I'll wear the same thing. Same, this is the same make, just a different color. This is Cool Dry rain gear also. It's, Cool Dry is spelled K-O-O-L-D-R-I, and you can look it up on the internet to order some if you'd like. But it's got big bottoms, it's got snaps so that you can snap it around your, your boots if you want. But the neat thing about it is you can get it on and off, off over your boots without, um, without having to take your boots off. There's a lady here in town named Mary Skeen. She also makes clothing and she makes some really nice rain gear that you can zip right up your leg and you don't have to take off your boots either. So anyway, bring something lightweight, 
Uh, don't worry about the color. Don't worry too much about the noise unless you're bow hunting. And very few of our hunters are bow hunters. So uh, anyway, make it lightweight, something you can carry with you during the day and it's not just going to weigh a ton. And make sure it's waterproof. As far as gloves go, 90% of the time I'll wear these right here. These things are a dollar a pair, they're roping gloves. But when the guides are handling ropes all the time, uh, these you can feel the ropes through these gloves. You can still feel things with these gloves. If it gets a little colder, I'll just put on two pair of them. But when I'm out hunting, and most of the hunters, you'll probably just want to get a good pair of, of warm, insulated gloves. These gloves right here are really handy. They have the mitten that will come over, and they'll keep your hands really warm. So get you a couple, three good pair of gloves, and uh, that should do you. As far as pants go, early in the season I'll wear what I'm wearing right now, either Wranglers or Carhartts or, or something like that. A lot of times I'll wear swimming trunks underneath, especially on our cast and blast hunts in late August, early September. And, uh, and I'll just run around in my swimming trunks if it's really warm. And then usually what I'll do is I'll wear a pair of these polar fleece pants, and I usually wear these all the way through the season. These are really comfortable. Uh, I like to make sure I have belt loops on them so I can wear a belt. Uh, I like pockets on the sides. Those are handy to throw things in. And anyway, they're just they're quiet, they're good pants, and uh, and they're comfortable, and they can stretch. You know, excuse me, the problem with Wranglers or uh, car horse or something is that, you know, you go to climb a mountain and they don't give you a lot of stretch. And these they do. So that pretty much covers the clothing. Um, now I'm going to go over your day pack. <coughs> when we go hunting every day, you should take a day pack with you. Uh, this is the day pack that I use. It's actually kind of a fanny pack, but it's an oversized fanny pack. And a few of the things that you'll want in your day pack every day, you'll, we'll pack a lunch for you each morning. So you'll put your lunch in there. You'll want your water bottle. You usually fill that up in the mornings. Most of the days we'll cross the creek at some point in time during the day, and you can fill up out of any of those creeks. But um, always take a quart of water with you in the morning. Guides have to carry a first aid kit with us. You don't have to if you don't want, um, but, but we do. We'll take some kind of a, a digital camera. This is the one that I use. I love digital cameras. Those things are so handy now. They're small, they're lightweight. You never have to worry about having enough film. You've got plenty of pictures. This is what I carry as far as a knife. I don't carry much with me. I'll take this and a little wet stone and that's about all I use. Actually what I wind up doing is borrowing your knife. That way you have to sharpen it at the end of the day and I don't have to worry about sharpening mine. And, you know, usually I'll carry my spot and scope with me. <coughs> This is a spot and scope that I carry. Uh, you'll notice that all of us guys use high-end optics. We don't usually use anything too cheap. Um, and I'll put this in a couple socks and I'll stick this in my pack. I also carry the video camera. I carry a, a Leica rangefinder. Pretty handy. It fits right in my shirt pocket. It usually stays right there. And then on my belt, I'll carry a, a Leatherman or a Gerber tool. And these things are really handy. It's a pair of pliers, it's a knife blade, it's a um, screwdriver, can opener. It's got all kinds of stuff on it. This one even has a little pair of scissors for punching tags. And I, I wear that on my, on my uh, belt at all times. The other thing is I'll carry pitch wood and a cigarette lighter or two in my, in my backpack, but I also like to carry these on my possession at all times. So the, the cigarette lighters, I always recommend everybody get two or three cigarette lighters, just put them in your pockets. They don't take up any room. Get a piece of pitch wood, put it in your pocket, and the Gerber tool, as long as you've got those three things, you can always start a fire. If you ever get lost, which I've never really lost anybody before, at least not for more than a few hours anyway, um, you've, always got a, you've always got a way to build a fire and get warm if you need to. These are things that I always carry on me at all times. So that's what my recommendation. The other thing that I carry in my bag, is these flashlights and a lot of times you'll see me I'll just I'll carry one of these around my neck and that's the other thing if it gets dark on you you've always got it so you know we're not gonna make fun of you if you wear it like a necklace but anyway it's good to have three or four of these I put I'll put a couple in my pants pockets and I'll put a couple in my um, uh, in my backpack and carry it with me all the time these little Petzl headlamps Petzl spelled P-T-Z-L and the batteries last a long time on these. I'll, I'll change the batteries a couple times during the season, but these things will these things will last a long time. 
and okay the other thing I want to go over with you is your, your weapons you're going to be using. If I had to choose one rifle for a hunter to bring it would be this one right here. Uh, the things that I like about this rifle, this, this is a Winchester Model 70 30 6 This is my rifle. I actually won the big bull contest with this one year and this was my gift. Anyway, what this has, this has a bolt action. Um, I, I recommend everybody get a bolt action if you're going to come hunting in the, in the west with us. The neat thing about the bolt action uh, is it's just very solid. There's very few things to go wrong with it. Uh, the, the, what I like about this action with the Winchester, the Ruger, and the Weatherby's is the three-point safety. This is on full safe. You cannot pull the trigger with it on safety. You flip it right there to half safe, and now you can open the bolt, but you still can't pull the trigger. Push it all the way forward, and it'll fire. <coughs> so three-point safety is a, a, a very good thing to have. Uh, this is a, three, a Leopold 4 power scope. It's a straight 4 power. Um, a Leopold is a good scope to have. There's, there's nothing wrong with Leopolds. In fact, they're probably one of my favorite scopes. Now, if you're talking unlimited budget on what you want to get, you know, buy a Zeiss, buy a Schmidt & Bender, buy something that's really good if you've got that kind of money. If you don't, these are just fine. What, I guess what I'm saying is don't go buy the cheapest scope you can find after you paid several thousand dollars for a hunt. Get a good scope, something that's going to shoot straight, something you're comfortable shooting. Um, and also, there's no muzzle brake here. Muzzle brakes are a guide's worst nightmare. The problem with the muzzle brake, there's a couple. One is it makes your gun barrel about that much longer, and when you stick it in the rifle scabbard, it's, it makes the gun stick up in the air farther. And then that, that uh, unbalances the gun when it's on the horse, and a lot of times it'll tip up like that and fall out of your scabbard. So, try to just keep a normal length barrel Try not to use the muzzle brake. The worst thing about the muzzle brakes, and I can attest from experience, is usually I'm looking through binoculars or the other guys are looking through binoculars, and you've got the gun out here and you're looking at the elk. You're sitting here looking through the scope waiting for the elk to stand out, step out. You're not paying attention to where my head's at, and I'm so busy looking to where the elk's at, I'm not paying attention to where your, your muzzle's at. And when that gun goes off, it's usually right next to my ear. So please don't bring a muzzle brake. If you bring a muzzle brake, I'm going to wear some kind of ear protection and that's not going to be very much fun on your bugle hunt it's because you're going to be expecting me to listen for bugles but if all you have is a gun with a muzzle brake and it's a semi-automatic uh, then bring it. I'm not telling you you can't bring it but if I had a choice in what you would bring it would be something like this but the main thing is that you can shoot it try not to get a caliber that is so large that you have to compensate for bad shooting abilities try to make sure that you can shoot straight if I had to choose a caliber, one caliber or two calibers for all hunters to shoot, it'd probably be a 270 or a 30 6 I don't like it when hunters shoot much more than 200 yards. I've had, I've actually had hunters shoot that far before. Um, I have, I've had some hunters that are dang good shots, and there's no doubt some of you guys are going to be very good shots too. But uh, practice your shooting, and I'll go over here in a minute all of the positions I'd like you to practice in. But anyway. Get you a good solid gun, something you trust, something you know inside and out, something that's reliable. And uh, don't just go buy one off the shelf, practice once or twice, throw the scope on it, and then come hunting. If you're going to spend this much money and dedicate this much time to your hunt, please make sure that you, you've got a gun that you can rely on. So, uh, that's, that's my recommendation. Here's another gun that I really like. This is a Thompson Contender. 223. This is what I, uh, a lot of my lion hunters, I'll just let them borrow this when they come on their hunt. It's very lightweight, it's very easy to shoot, and uh, it's only a single shot, but for mountain lion hunting you don't need, need much more than that. But it's got a very good safety on it. That's one of the things I really like about this gun. That is just so lightweight. I love lightweight guns. On our cast and blast hunts, what's handy is if you bring a gun that breaks down fairly easy. Any pump shotgun will break down very easy. All you got to do is unscrew this cap. and the gun just fits together very well. Screw the cap back on and you're ready to go. <coughs> a lot of over and unders, your double barrels, single shots, they'll all do the same thing. So when we're bird hunting, what's handy is if you got one of these and it's got those little carrying cases, I don't know if you've seen those shotguns, they, they already come in a little plastic carrying case, those are, the, those are the handiest. If you have that, bring it just like that and, and we'll just load it into the panniers on the horse like that. 
Because what happens is when you come on your cast and blast hunt, you're going to be hunting black bears, you're going to be hunting grouse, and you're going to be fly fishing. So you've got these three major bulky items that we have to carry, and you only have one rifle scabbard on your horse. So if you can bring a shotgun that's already broke down, and if you can bring a fly rod or a fishing rod of some kind that does the same thing, that it breaks down, that'll make things a lot simpler for us when, we're on, when you're on your cast and blast hunt. Because typically for grouse hunting, you've got plenty of time to put your gun together. It's not that big.